In this tutorial, I will explain how you can program a buzzer using a micro bit and a sensor shield. The buzzer should sound for one second, then stop for a second on a loop. You will need a micro bit and a Key Studio 37 in 1 starter kit for this project. A link to details about the kit can be found in the notes. Aside from the micro bit itself, the components you will need are a Key Studio micro bit sensor V2 shield, a USB cable, a digital buzzer, and three DuPont jumper wires. All of these, except the micro bit itself, can be found in the kit. Details of all these components can be found in the notes. Be careful to choose the correct buzzer, the digital buzzer. The digital buzzer will have a sticker on it when you first open the kit. You should remove the sticker so that the buzzer can function correctly. You can also identify the digital buzzer because under the sticker will be the letters H, Y, D, Z. You may also need a USB-A to USB-C adapter if you have a more modern computer, which will enable you to connect up the micro bit. You should connect the components exactly as in this diagram. A link to the diagram can also be found in the notes. Don't be too concerned if the micro bit doesn't go into the sensor shield at first. You'll need to push it with a little bit of force to ensure it is correctly in place. You should carefully trace each cable to make sure they are plugged in exactly as required. Remember that S should go to S7 of the sensor shield, positive should go to V8 of the sensor shield, and negative should go to G9 of the sensor shield. Remember also that the cable from the computer plugs directly into the micro bit, not into the sensor shield. Once you have connected everything up, then it is simply time to program. So, of course, the first thing you want to do is navigate to make code if you haven't used make code before, and then make yourself a new project. We'll call it sound. Now, we are going to keep the two default blocks on start and forever. Both are useful. And then we go to basic, and we want to use pause. We're going to use two pauses in this program. But we also need to disable the LEDs. So we'll go down to here and we'll go to LED enable false. That just means the onboard LEDs won't be used in this program. Finally, we go down to advanced. You might want to zoom out a bit if you can't see this. You go to pins and it's very important you choose digital write pin, not analog write pin, digital write pin. We'll drop that in here and we'll duplicate it and we'll drop it in here. Okay, now this one needs to be one, which means it's outputting sound and this one will be zero which means it's not outputting any sound we also want to change this to 1000 milliseconds which is the equivalent of a oh, one second sorry 1000 milliseconds 1000 milliseconds so it will make a buzzer sound for one second and then it won't make a buzzer sound for one second finally we want to change this to pin seven and this one to pin seven and just like that our program's completed so then we can go and hit download um, one way you can tell it's working correctly or not just before we download is you can look over here and you can see it's flashing for one second and stopping. Flashing for one second and then stopping. And that is exactly the way the program should work in the simulator. So hopefully it will work fine on the micro bit itself. Once you have connected everything up and completed the program, it's time to download. So get your device, your sensor shield, your buzzer, your micro bit, everything connected up, as well as the cable, and plug the cable into your computer. If your computer is a bit newer, you may need an adapter. When it plugs in, you should see a micro bit icon show up somewhere on your desktop, and then you can just go to your program and hit download, and you can drag your program directly from your desktop and then just drop it onto your micro bit. And you should see the light on your micro bit flashing for a little while as the program is downloaded to the micro bit. And then finally, if it is working correctly, you should hear the buzzer making sound. If your buzzer does not work like this, then there are a few things you can try. 
Double check the program to make sure you have chosen digital pin and also that you've chosen pin 7. Make sure your connections are all correct and finally make sure you are using the digital not the passive buzzer.